What's going on, guys? It's Tom with Stocked Up. I hope you guys had a fantastic Monday in the stock market. We actually continued down this morning off of some of that downwards momentum from last week. And then we started kind of following this trend line here towards the upside to the end of the day. Now, the SPY is kind of consolidating here right around this 439, 440 resistance. I'm going to really watch that area tomorrow. If we do hold this trend line, I'm still going to maybe watch for the SPY to run up maybe up to 444. I could see a retest of like 442.50 or possibly 444. But to me, in a perfect world, I would love to see us fall out of this trend line right here. Uh, we've been trading up for a while and 444 is huge. I mean, that is a big, big trend line up ahead. I mean, look at this double top, 444, definitely a big level. And we saw a bunch of stocks recover back up today. Mara actually had a great move to the upside. You can see the stock ran up 7.98%. Bitcoin had some amazing news in the middle of the day, and we're going to get into that in just a second. Firstly, though, just wanted to remind everybody on the economic calendar, the big inflation data coming out tomorrow. There has been some Fed speakers the past couple days, too. Tomorrow, there will be a uh, Bullard speaking, it looks like, 9 a.m. Eastern time, so keep that on the radar, but the big thing's going to be that inflation rate. But I know everybody was looking at Mara today and Bitcoin and it is flying up. There was some great news and I cannot believe the price target I'm actually seeing right now for Bitcoin. But firstly, I just want to talk about Mara because it was a fantastic stock, 7.98%, a ton of momentum, broke recent highs as well. Even Riot had a fantastic move. I like to see that one moving up as well. 8.9% actually did a little bit better. Coinbase even recovered back up. I know this stock has been real choppy lately, right around resistance right now. So maybe we can continue tomorrow out of some of these Bitcoin stocks because this is some great news that we're seeing here. So there's a bank called Standard Chartered. Now it's a little bit weird of a name, but they're bo they're boosting their forecast on Bitcoin to 100 and twenty thousand dollars if this excites you guys smash that like button comment down below how you feel about bitcoin do you think that this is actually a realistic target here now personally i'm not so sure you know i'm a very big skeptic of bitcoin here at these levels but at the end of the day it's one of the most volatile i i guess you could say assets out there you know it has huge moves to the upside sometimes and if it goes on a big run like it has in the past I think we could easily see 120,000, but I'm just looking for us to get back up to like 50 or 60,000 right now. And what I found interesting is that they actually said that by the end of this year, they could see it hitting $50,000, which is just nuts to me. Let's actually go out to a Bitcoin chart, BTC USD. It's at 30,000 right now. They're saying that they could see us hitting 50,000 by the end of the year. I mean, that's a near like, I mean, you're talking like near like 75, 80, 90 percent run ups here if we start getting that high. I mean, that is just that's out of this world, guys. So uh, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on Bitcoin. I think it's very interesting. And I think that you guys will appreciate Mara, Riot, other stocks like that over the next few days, because I mean, to me, this is just some of the better news that we've seen for Bitcoin in a little while. Now, obviously something like the BlackRock ETF being approved, that might be even better, but I bet you that they're probably forecasting and they're at, on their own side of things that you know they're looking for some approvals on some of those uh, ETFs coming out and different things like that. So uh, I hope that this happens. I hope that even the government starts to maybe loosen some restrictions on it or or maybe even starts to regulate it a little bit more. In some cases, there's some arguments where some people want it regulated. So let me know what you guys think. I think it's really cool though. I think it's gonna cause a lot of volatility here in the shorter term, especially out of Bitcoin. Like I said, Mara, Riot, stocks like that are gonna be the ones to keep your eyes on. Mara is my personal favorite down here. I know a lot of people like Coinbase and other ones as well. Let me know what your favorite one is. But let's go ahead and get into What's going on with Twitter and Meta again here? I know a lot of people like this. They like to talk about this. Some people are like, come on, quit talking about Meta and Twitter here. But it's interesting because Meta stock is kind of holding up well. You know, it's it didn't have the worst day today. It actually closed up 1.23%. If we go look at other big stocks in the market, like Microsoft had a pretty bad day, 1.6% to the downside. Apple, 
moved down pretty significantly. Tesla had a bad day. So a lot of those major tech stocks in the market really dipped off today, but it was really good to see Meta holding its ground. And I think that that shows that it's a little bit more powerful here in the shorter term. And it has some, I would say, added volatility, maybe some added buying coming in with some of this news. And the big thing that I'm seeing here is obviously their, uh, their numbers. Every single day, we keep getting more updates on their signups and they're surpassing 100 million signups already. Man, 100 million. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about 100 million signups. I feel like there could be more, honestly. I think, though, that it's going very, very well for them. I posted a couple. If you want to check it out, it's Tom underscore stocked up on there. Shoot me a follow. I'd really appreciate you guys on there. I might even follow you back. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, talk about Meta's stock a little bit more because I feel like in the short term, it's a little bit over uh, overextended. And I, I do think that with them starting to take all of this from Twitter, it's going to be so good in the short term. Like, just look at the chart here for Twitter's activity. I mean, you're seeing a, a big drop off here in traffic. I mean, that is not good to see traffic going down like that on Twitter.com. That's honestly really bad. So I, I don't know if that's just because of, you know, there could be some arguments for this. As I read through the comments here, you know, some people were talking about, uh, you know, that, that something with Google, like for example, they might not be pushing things as hard because they don't like Elon and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. That could be a possibility. I'm not saying it is, but you know, just something to keep in the back of your minds. But getting into Meta stock, like I said, it's starting to hold this support here very, very well. And let's go over the support a little bit in the short term because it's a pretty big one here. It's right around 289 to 290. Now, the thing is we have to give or take a little bit. It's been volatile today. It actually fell under there momentarily and ripped right back up, had a low of day down around 287. So if you're saying like, well, Tom, how should I play this one tomorrow? I think that there's a couple ways. Uh, the first one I would do is probably look for a bit of a short-term scalp trade between 288.50 and 287. So if you continue to see this stock dip, honestly, I wouldn't trade it back down to here because it would probably, you know, I, I would maybe look for it to bounce back up. But if we do end up falling below 288.50, you know, you could do a little scalp play there back down to that support. I think that would be great. Maybe even uh, trim a couple contracts there and then hold a couple as it continues to go down. Now, another way to play it obviously would be to the upside. You know, there's been a pretty big resistance in the short term. I feel like if we get above like 295 tomorrow with some pretty good momentum, I think this stock could go up, test like 296 plus. Uh, like I said, 296 might be a first good target there. Then maybe go after like 298, 298.50. That's another big level where we're seeing a bunch of wicks and stuff like that up there as well. So you can maybe have some targets here. If you do, you know, get in on a break, you know, you can put your stop loss maybe at like 293.50. Or, you know, if you're trading options, you can eye it up. Once the stock falls under 293.50, then you're out or something like that. You know, obviously do your own due diligence, find your own risk reward. Um, and obviously it just depends on your strategy, but I do think it's a pretty good way here. Meta is a, uh, in a pretty interesting channel. And I think once we start to pick a, a better direction, we'll start to see some better movement here. But thank you guys for sticking with me through that so far. You know, Meta, we have Bitcoin. I really like the Bitcoin news for tomorrow. I think it's going to be fantastic. I still have some awesome plays coming up. And some of the plays that we talked about yesterday are actually doing fantastic today. So I'll go over some of those even uh, as we go forward too. But one thing I wanted to talk about was Morgan Stanley actually has an NVIDIA price target right now at $500. And I cannot believe it. They say that they're going to beat uh, sales expectations for the rest of 2023, at least on the AI chip. So sounds pretty good here. Uh, $500. That's a pretty good price target by Morgan Stanley. If we go look at NVIDIA at the moment, it's trading for around $422. If we go out to a daily chart, the high is up right around 440, 439. So we're looking at this. They have a target of 500. Is it realistic? I think it is realistic, you know, especially if we do have a continuation here. Just in the short term with what we're dealing with, I'm not a fan right now. Now, hey, if we break the high at 440, you know, all gloves are off. We could probably keep ripping here. Until we break some of these highs that we have in the short term, I'm starting to actually look back to the downside. If we look at NVIDIA, 
there's been a huge trend line just like on the spy so if we start to break under this trend line to the downside i'm going to start to look for some puts now today i thought we were going to really start to fall spy almost got through its trend as well you can see right here it's like right on the cusp of starting to really fall off like if we have another bloody uh, market open tomorrow that's going to be a great confirmation to the downside i think sqqq stuff like that will be awesome to day trade but i'm really going to look for some of these breaks like with nvidia if we see that break i'll be watching for the spy to start to follow that at the same time though if it starts to trade up you know we have to be able to adapt you can't just buy puts and then not adapt back to the upside you have to be adaptable if you're day trading out there that's one of the biggest things you know the market's always moving and there's always news coming out affecting it in all types of ways like who knows something could happen with china tomorrow and the u.s and it could make the market go crazy in either direction so you know there's always weird events just keep that in the back of your mind there but i wanted to go ahead and get into my plays from yesterday i actually wanted to go over amd i thought this was an awesome awesome play so advanced micro devices fantastic double bottom right here around 110 to 110 50 started really moving back to the upside but even though it recovered up today i was happier with the first move that we had to the downside so i talked about this one last night and then guess what the bot even called it out this morning we had the hybrid bot called amd 111 puts for 131 dollars they ran up over 265 dollars I think the high of day was like 271 or something, over 100%, guys. That was awesome. AMD, over 100% with the hybrid bot. Love to see that. It called out one day trade today, pretty early on. Pretty relaxing day after you hit on one like that. So let's go. Love to see that. Good job, AMD. But getting back into um, my plays for tomorrow, AMD is actually the first one. So uh, looking at AMD, it recovered up a lot today. It's right back into resistance. I think this one could be a play for both ways. If we break above 114, I'll actually look at calls, but I have a feeling we might reject here. Um, if we do reject at 114, I'm going to look for puts, especially if we break back below 112.80. I think 112.80 is just under that 113 support. It'll be like a good safety net for us. If we get under that, I think that'll give us enough room back down as well, maybe down to like 112. 111.60 for a scalp. So keep your eyes on AMD. Great play today on the hybrid bot. Congrats to everybody who banked off that. If you banked off of it, let me know in the comments. Hype it up, guys. AMD, let's go. That was a fantastic play. Um, the next one's actually going to be DraftKings. Now, DraftKings is not my play for tomorrow, but I talked about it above $27 yesterday. Great breakout this morning. All you have to do is just place a couple of alerts, guys. Place an alert, $27. You know, if it breaks that high of day, get in possibly, uh, you know, obviously do your own due diligence. But if you see a lot of momentum, it can play out. And look at DraftKings, ran up all day long, 8.29%. It's one of my favorite stocks ever. I had to talk about it. I really like them for this year and the next couple. They're really increasing their profitability and stuff like that. And I think that they'll finally be profitable this year. That's at least what they said in their previous earnings. So I love it. Go ahead, DraftKings. Keep going up. I hope you go up again tomorrow. But the play for tomorrow is actually going to be CCL. So CCL has been running up into recent resistance. I did see a nice like double top up here kind of. Um, honestly, it's kind of more of like a big trend line, like a big wedge type of play. If we draw it out, I know some people like these types of setups. Some people don't. But if CCL breaks this, I think we could see a pretty significant move to the upside um, if we break it, you know, you could see a big jump up, maybe like 1970, maybe $20, something like that could be attainable. Uh, you know, 1.37%. I like it. Um, Carnival Cruise Lines, just a fantastic setup overall, you know, great moves. And I'm just really happy to see Carnival, uh, doing as well as it is. Cause I'll just say this, if we go out to a daily chart and we zoom out, it is rough. And Hey, don't forget to subscribe guys. If you're new here, I appreciate you guys. Uh, we've had some big money plays on CCL coming in lately, and they've been really, really running up. And we're going to get into some big money plays here in just a couple minutes as well. But it's actually time for the momentum plays. And with the first one for the day, we're going to go ahead and go with Mara, M-A-R-A. -A. How could you not? 
Mars really running up. Bitcoin's exploding 7.98%. If they break above 17.15, I'm going to go ahead and look at calls. That's just above the high of day there. I, they're very close to the high of day actually at close. So be careful with Mara. I think it could be a fun play uh, as we go forward. Microsoft. Uh, now this one's actually to the downside. So poor Microsoft. They had a pretty bad move here today. You know, I'm going to be safe with this one. If they end up falling under... 329.25. I'll look at puts to the downside. That's a pretty good, like, little support there intraday. I like that. It's almost like an inverse head and shoulders pattern is starting. They could even continue up. Now, if they do, though, I just don't think that there's going to be a lot of room. So, and if the market does recover, I'll probably be looking at something else besides Microsoft, to be honest. So, I'm only looking at this one to the downside tomorrow. Now, I think NVIDIA, which is the next momentum play, could possibly be a good one in both directions so you know where we have this nice trend line we've been following on nvidia like i talked about with the spy and if we break under the trend and back under 418 i'm going to look at puts okay if we get under 418 i i think that we could really start to fall down a little bit more now at the same time if nvidia runs up above 426 midday i'll look for a quick scalp to the upside now just keep in mind, I think if we run up, we're going to be hitting a lot of resistances. Unless you see a clear breakout and just a ton of momentum overall, I would be very careful playing this one up. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm mainly looking at it down. But um, that those are our momentum plays for the day. NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Mara right there. Those are our levels. Uh, keep them on watch. And as Mike would always say, it's time for the big money plays of the day with the first one or with the only one we have amazon now amazon had a pretty bad day today down 2.04 percent and they actually have amazon prime day tomorrow and the 12th of july so keep that in mind going forward um that is a pretty big deal obviously prime day they have a lot of sales stuff like that um this is a pretty big play though so looking at uh amazon it's the 126 strike puts for August 4th of 2023, there's actually $1.27 million thrown into this play. Looking pretty good. I think that for the next couple of days, we could continue to see Amazon and some of these bigger tech stocks fall down. Now, they are bouncing off the support around 126. In the short term, one thing that I like about this is that if it maybe breaks under 126 tomorrow, you can use that as a great level to the downside. We had recent support around this 127 area. Now we're talking about 126. We break under that. Maybe look for another scalp down to like 125, 124.50. I like that. Or you could swing it maybe with the big money as well. Do your own due diligence. But that's what the big money is looking at there. I think that they're getting in that to open. If they're shorting that, I mean, they could be. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that personally. I don't think that they would be doing that right here uh, myself. So uh, I'm looking at Amazon to the downside. It could be an interesting play. I know Prime Day is a, a very interesting time for Amazon, to say the least. You know, big sales, stuff like that. So keep it on watch over the next couple of days. That could maybe add some volatility, and it could make it pretty fun. I know some guys were talking about it in the Discord today earlier, but I really appreciate you guys joining up today. Smash that like button, and I really want you guys to hype up B Dizzle in the chat, B Dizzle 11 is our member of the day today. Congratulations. Nice plays today on DraftKings 28 strike calls. Good stuff. And AMD 111 puts. So good, good plays there. The AMD puts were amazing. I love DraftKings as well. Congrats, B Dizzle. I know you're new to the community. Um, you know, you've been in here since May 23rd. So appreciate you. Uh, thanks for joining up. And as always, guys, check out the links down below if you want to get access to some of those bot plays like AMD, some of the big money plays before they come out, like Amazon, British Petroleum, XPEV, CCL calls the other day. They've been ripping. Rivian's been ripping. So uh, these big money plays have been great lately, guys. Check out the links down below. You will love it. And these bot plays like AMD have been amazing. Even last, uh, even yeah, last week, AMD calls ended up being good. So, you know, we had calls last week do decent. Now we had the puts play out well. So, Good stuff overall, guys. Check out those links. I appreciate you guys joining up. And other than that, let's be profitable tomorrow, guys. There we go.